time to watch day two in the final games of the Pokemon Japan Championships 2023. Day two works a bit differently than day one. It will be um, open team sheet, close Terra, and it will be best of three now. I'm like day one, which was uh, best of one. So a bit different in that regard, for sure, for sure. So it would make for some interesting matchups as well. I imagine we'll also be seeing the junior and senior finals too for it. Yeah, we can see some of the teams here. Yeah, the Gyarados, Tinglu, Goldengo, Dozo. All of the teams is linked with like edited, uh, ink. yeah, like Thunderbolt Trick. How much too crazy here? There was some interesting ones, like there was one with uh, Stantler that had like four supportive moves. And this one's Gunk Shot, Protect, Safety Goggles, which was pretty interesting. Also Wood Hammer on Mimikyu. Um, well, let's skip ahead through most of these. Got Garganackle, Tusk, Chiyu. Where's the Stantler one? I want to see the Stantler one first. Stantler. <laughs> yeah, it has Helping Hand Trick Room Reflect. It's, like, it's wild, it's actually wild. Stantler, Poyer the Goat. Yeah, let's see. Go right to the games. Yeah, we get Gyarados, Flutter, Amoongus, Bax, Goldengo, Ting Lu versus Dragonite, Ting Lu, Dozo, Arcanine, Goldengo, Tatsu. Pretty interesting match, but I think the Gyarados player always has like a bit of an advantage here because Gyarados kind of likes being in front of Dragonite, likes being in front of Ting Lu, likes Arcanine. Gyarados also matches up incredibly well into Don Dozo stuff too. So I imagine this should be like a fairly favorable matchup. And fun for me, it's like kind of similar to like my Fort Wayne team where you have the Gyarados, you have the Moongus, and you just rotate around through those and you just uh, use that as your way to beat Don Dozo. Some ones like Backs are pretty nice too. Backs is being bulky, or Water Resist as well. Backs can kind of stand in front of uh, Dragonite really well, which is also pretty helpful into this matchup for sure. Yeah, this Ting Lu and Bax Calibur is a weed versus Ting Lu Dundozo. Ting Lu Dundozo is a bit hard to deal with because like there isn't necessarily something that hits Dundozo super effectively here. So the main way you deal with the Dozo is essentially this rotate, rotate, and this, uh, slow it down. But with this weeding Dundozo this straight up, you can just go for Yawn and maybe this like chill for a few turns. So it's pretty hard to like rotate on this properly with like the combination of Team Lu Bax as like every Pokemon that can be switched to would be hit by either the Tinglu or would be hit super effect effectively by the Bax Caliber, making for some like bit of a tough situation here to kind of navigate through. But that said, you're at least kind of safe in this overall how you can present your game plan early. It's not the most uh, problematic in the world. We'll see, he switches out. Ting Lu, getting away from the Dozo that could wave crash, and this going to Gyarados can easy intimidate down. Smart switch, because like neither of those mons can really threaten here. So you're uh decently safe. And yeah, we see the icicle crash as well. Crash can flinch, but it's also doing this 50% straight up, so. Ooh. That's where the citrus berry is. Interesting. Ye Ruination. Goes on backs. Trace 50% damage as well. We see the yawn as well. So not really getting the most leverage out of the switch ultimately. As the switch was kind of red. So it ultimately this works out in the favor of uh Heralto. But that's like the one hard thing here, because like they can't have hit Dozo necessarily, and the Dozo has yawn. So the Dozo is allowed to this quick yawn and uh be problematic as well. Also interesting is the Dozo actually has a body press 
Which body press, of course, do it doesn't matter how much you intimidate it because it's going to be a defense boost and it'll be able to hit you like that and be fine. Instead, we do you see the Dozo to switch out, getting rid of the intimidate and also getting a switch to the Goldingo. The both the Goldingos are matching. All right. And since this is, of course, a uh, double elimination, this is winner's round one. These are both winner sized games, I believe. But yeah, that's a kind of interesting position. Gyarados sits decently under normal circumstances, but there's also this uh, Scarf Thunderbolt, which is a good way to scare out the Gyarados here, which definitely doesn't like to hit it. You can also this, uh, have Ting Lu go for like Stomping Tantrum here. Or maybe have it set up something to help get a kill later. And we just see Goldengo go to Ting Lu straight up. And did, what does the Gyarados do? Ooh. Ting Lu switches. This could just be a dead Gyarados, but likely a Protect, if anything, considering the circuit. Oh no, no Protect. Shadow Wall goes through, does like zero damage. Trying to set up for the surprise KO and this game where their Team Liu to sh meet this Shadow Ball, this do more damage, right? A great play so far by Mira. Yeah, we see the lefties. A little leftover recovery. Great play by both of us. Getting another turn that's essentially this neutral, right? Yeah, it's Shadow Ball locked Goldengo now, so the Gyarados is safe. Gyarados is very safe with a Ting Lu next to it. But it's still hard to like kind of navigate through this. I might want to throw out a T-Wave at this position. This would try to hinder one of these Pokemon a little bit more, right? Because you only have uh, Bax, Goldengo, Ting Lu, Gyarados, no Amoongus. So there's not necessarily a longevity on this Gyarados favorite player's side. You won't be able to win that longevity game. That is very meaningful in a matchup like this where Dozo is just a monster to get through and not being able to win the longevity game can create some problems, of course. Yeah, we see another yawn. Oh, and a ruination onto the Dragonite, multi-skill broken, 84 HP. A lot of chip damage going down, the wave crash goes off. Okay. Good chip. Importantly, Dragonite's also in a position where now you can look for a Terrastalization. Like, Dozo doesn't need a Terrastal in this matchup, as Dozo is already not getting hit super effectively by anything here. So you can kind of just look for a Terra Blast from your Terra Flying Dragonite into this Gyarados and try to knock it out like that. You could also have this... You need to go on the aggressive a little bit. Unfortunately not Lumberry, so you could always get T-Waved in response, but I think going for a Terra Blast is still like very high value, right? You're doing so much damage to them. This overall that it should be worth to just throw it out. You could even throw it out into the Ting Lu potentially, just to get even more damage in general. Also notable, both of these Ting Lu have Stealth Rock, which is pretty interesting and honestly not too bad. Okay, we see the switch out from Gyarados into Goldengo, something that of course can take that Terra Flying from the Dragonite. And we are going to see the Terra Flying, I believe. No, it's actually the Ting Lu going for the Terra Water to get through the Wavecrest first. And no Dragonite uh, Terrestrialization. Likely meaning it could be clicking uh, Dragon Dance here. And yeah, it is clicking Dragon Dance. <laughs> it's leading to a massive threat right now. But it's a bit scary because Goldengo Make It Rain should be able to actually KO this uh, Dragonite. And Dragonite won't be faster because of the Choice Scarf on Goldengo most likely. So... While well, it was a cool attempt with the Dragon Dance, I don't think it actually leads to much uh, value for Rata right now. 
We all see it. Like, the Make It Rain is threatening a KO. You could protect Dragonite, have uh, Dondozo take it, the Make It Rain, or go into your own Ting Liu and have Ting Liu take it. Just to get a special attack drop and try to enable Dragonite to live the next one. Which is uh, very reasonable, I think. I think that play would work pretty well. This is scary because, like, Ting Liu does switch to buff that Make It Rain damage. You could also have your Dozo switch back out to your own Ting Lu to try to enable it as well. Just uh, make sure you can take the Vessel. Yeah, we do see the Dozo likely going to that Ting Lu to mute that Make It Rain damage a little bit, and yes it is. So Dragonite should be able to live the Make It Rain now. And be able to get off a Terra Blast here. Yeah, that's exactly what we'll see. Likely into the Ting Lu slot. And since his uh, Dragon Dance was set up, this will be a neutral Sharp Beak Terra Blast from a Dragonite into this Gyarados. This should do absurd amount of damage. Yeah, we see the Make It Rain fails to KO, but puts them at extremely low HP. Yeah, we see the Terra Blast. Ooh, Gyarados takes that extremely well. Likely a uh, physical boosting nature, like Impish, or... Yeah, this Impish. <laughs> Considering that cow, because that was, uh... Obscenely bulky. Dragonite doing no damage, even with a boosting item in Sharp Beak there. We'll see, it will get the KO on Gyarados now, but the thing is... Gyarados has a mind game here, where it can protect this turn, or it can protect the next. And then... Both Ting Lu and Dragonite on the other side have taken way too much damage in this game to be safe at all. So a very hard position to navigate through. Brilliant. Like Golden Dango can always just make it rain here. And you should be generally like okay. Oh, actually we see the switch. Not confident that they would be able to get the knockouts. And this for setting the boost for later. And then we see Ting Lu come back in. This does mean Terra Blast will go out, actually. So, bit of an interesting play. And yeah, we do see the Ting Lu switch back into the Dondozo, I imagine. Actually, no, into their own Goldengo to resist to make it rain there. We see the Protect from the Dragonite. Okay. Do we see the Protect from the Gyarados, though? That's the most. Ooh, no. It's just a waterfall into the Goldengo, getting even more chip damage off. And all these Pokemon are getting like super low HP at this point. So it's going to be very hard to just navigate through this end game. With the lower and lower this HP drops. But yeah, now you do have the ability at least with the Dragonites. Get a Tarot Blast off into one of these Pokemon. You can go for the Ting Lu. You can go for the Gyarados. Gyarados confirmed 2 at KOing you. I mean 3 at KOing you. So you'll be able to get a couple more Make It Rains going. With the Hero Gold Engo. And you can also this Terra Blast. And you do thread in uh, Shadow Ball Potential if they try to switch into their own. Uh, it was a bit unadvisable to necessarily switch into their Golden Ingo on their side. But we'll see. Like, they do want to because of the... Uh, um, they do want to because of the threat of the Terra Blast. Golden Ingo, of course, resisting Terra Blast. And we do see a Dragon Dance. Actually insane, boy. Oh my god. And they got it right because the Gyarados protecting there. The Ting Lu on this side has no way to hit a flying type Pokemon. It only has Stomping Tantrum, Ruination, Stealth Rock, and Protect. Yeah, we see the Stomping Tantrum into the Goldengo. Goldengo goes down. I guess that was a well-covered play because Goldengo went for the T-Bolt into Gyarados there, meaning Dragonite always gets uh, another Dragon Dance for free. Though that said, there isn't really much to account for. I guess you kind of do have some leverage here, but Goldengo can still come in. Goldengo still lives the attack, and it's likely back caliber. Can this Ice Shard you and this KO you later? So that Dragon Dance isn't necessarily the highest value. Like It does confirm the KO on uh, Gyarados, and what nothing can really switch in for the Gyarados that efficiently, but... I don't know if it's actually worth losing the Goldengo for that. Considering that we will just have an Ice Shard potential from Bax later in the game. 
A good thing is John does is still at least like sitting pretty, so if you can get a bit more leverage on, on let's go for another yawn, then you'll probably be into a decent spot. And the longer Ting Lu stays on the field is also pretty good as well, because like if Ting Lu can't hit Dragonite, then you know, you can stay and always guarantee your Dragonite will get off another round of attacks. Well, likely to see Yawn from the Dozo. You don't really need to do much. Do it. Yeah, there's lefties again. Interesting, interesting. And we'll likely see Bax Caliber cut this come in and look for an Ice Shard in this next turn. Which does make me curious if body press plus E speed at plus one will be able to KO this uh Bax Caliber. Cause I would imagine that would be like the most likely play attempt, because this is of course an assault vest Bax. Has no protect. So you could protect your Dragonite and go for a body press to get big super effective damage out onto it and potentially this like end the game a bit more because like the gold angle would have to be like scarf locked into something too if you take the KO on it there's still some mind game on this turn like if they go back and so they switch to gold angle on a protect then it's like kind of bad but no instead this going for the gold angle right away which honestly fair enough there's an interesting position still because like they can make it rain stomping they can let this thunderbolt dozo and get the KO that way And Dragonite will see like a lot of damage off here potentially. Reading the no target doesn't get the KO though. Even not plus one. And this is the make it rain stomping tantrum. The safest play from them as well. As this Dozo this has lost way too much HP at this point. Stomping tantrum. Does it KO? And it does. Now this is Ting Lu versus the world, and that's not happening. As you can switch out your gold and go, get T Bolt back, and you just have leftovers recovery on their Ting Lu. You also have the ability to quick ruination, Stompy Tantrum, and this opposing Ting Lu has already lost its Citrus Berry, and it's sitting around like 50% HP. So the game's already very, very over. It's off in that turn. Yeah, make it rain, uh, Stomping this. Perfectly covered that turn because, like, Dragonite, if it protects, does this dies. Don't worry, really have the ability to switch at this point based on HP percent. And Ting Lu being faster than Don Dozo being, like, very helpful in that scenario. Yeah, Bax Calibur switches in, Mega Rain goes off, KOs Ting Lu, giving Bax Calibur at least, like, a little bit more time in the field, right? <laughs> yeah, close game. Oh, I guess that was not yet top 8, because that's uh, best of one set. <laughs> Monka. <laughs> oh, this is Acro Talon with no item, Ting Liu. It's the no item Acro Talon. Let me see. Where's this? Dozo. Well, I can't believe they chose not to stream the player with Stantler. That's kind of insane. <laughs> Let me see what I see. Alright. So it's Wave Crash, Heavy Slam, Yawn, Dozo. King Lu of EQ, Ruination, Heavy Slam, Protect. Moonblast, Shuttle Ball, Sub. Protect Flutter, Dragonite with Outrage, E-Speed, Thunder Punch, Aqua Jet, Safety Goggles, will o wisp Chiyu, and Sacred Sword, Icicle Crest, Chen Pao. And we got Safety Goggles, Bulk Up Annihilate, Sash, uh, Mousehold, Acrobatics, Tailwind, Quick Guard, Protect, Talon, Ruination, Sand Tomb, Heavy Swim, Protect, King Lu, and uh, Double Screens, Misty Terrain, Grim, along with Swords Dance, Citrus Berry, Iron Hands. Should make for a 
pretty interesting game. Like Iron Hands, Annihilate, both of those ones are like really strong into this matchup. Just having two fighting types into <laughs> a triple dark team is already very good. And this uh Dragonite, of course, being Terra Normal makes for even more problematic situations, right? See. Oh shoot. Yeah, Ting Liu. Ting Liu Grim into Chen Pao. But you can kind of just sit here pretty well, I think. You yeah, just get screens on and you just uh kind of just chill. In this kind of matchup. Oh shoot. <laughs> no. Brief pause, brief pause, brief pause. I made a mistake. <laughs> mistake was made. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, one second. I may have this exited a very important tab. But yeah, I do think this turn is like generally this pretty good for them, right? Because you can the screens, Chen Pao Dragonite can't KO Ting Lu and Grim. You can also this Terra Water Ting Lu, making for a very uh safe turn to say the least. So like overall, this is just like a very um good scenario, and it's not something that can really be beat down too well. So it's overall this fine. Yeah, back to the game. <laughs> Likely there's going to be screens and then going for a Terra water with Ting Liu and this heavy swimming all over this Chen Pao. <laughs> yeah, we see the Terra. Ting Liu Terra's first. Get that Terra water up. Okay, there's the E-Speed, does a lot of damage. Yeah, now Reflect goes up. Reflect is what really makes things hard here. As we do see the Icicle Crush as well going to the Grim. Does get the KO on Grim turn 1. But the Reflect is up, and like, honestly, I kind of feel like that Reflect is worth the loss there. As you get the Ruination down. But now it's like very, basically impossible for Chimpao and Dragonite to get like massive value into, uh these two Pokemon on this side. And it's likely there's going to be an Iron Hands reveal or an Annihilate reveal. In either case, it's still uh, very scary. So, like, Annihilate can just deal with the Flutter hits well because of the Team Lou. The Iron Hands... Iron Hands has a bit of a tougher time against uh, Flutter and Endgame here. But it still at least, like, just really, really destroys um, the Dragonite, the Chimp Pao, the Chi Yu, the Team Lou, and the Dozo. Well, all five of the other mons don't really like seeing the Iron Hands. That might make it at least worth it enough. And especially if uh, Dragonite goes for anything. Iron Hands has like very, very high physical defense. So it's just naturally able to kind of beat out any of these Pokemon here. So it's very hard to get through that. We'll see, like, it's likely you see, like, a wild charge, and you see the E-Speed, Icicle Crash, double up into Iron Hands. Trying to get a flinch. If you get a flinch here, you actually do change the tide of the game, because <laughs> this damage output. Yeah, we see the Citrus, so you need, like, two flinches for this to work. And yeah, we do see the punch. You see the little punch there. Doesn't quite KO. We see the Ruination from the Ting Lu, instead of the Heavy Slam. Pro likely uh, reading Ting Liu to switch in from the opposing side to resist the Thunder Punch. But unfortunately, that was not what happened there. But it's still fine though, because like, if the opponent goes for another round of like, okay, I gamble for Icicle Clash, Crash Flinch, and Iron Hands get Drain Punch off on Chen Pao, then that's like all the damage that's uh, taken away. So it's a very hard scenario to just go for outright. You could like Terra Ghost Chen Pao potentially. 
and maybe use that as an out because like oh i fight this terra ghost right then i'll be able to just have the drain punch immunity and go for this icicle cross play again but no we don't see any taro and so we see an e-speed into the ting lu and we see the sucker punch as well and we just see a there's a thunder punch into the dragonite not bothering with the drain punch likely this is another heavy swam to cover for uh any creative switching with like potentially like flutter main right because they wouldn't switch ting lu after you show ruination i'm kind of confused like about the approach of the Chimpao Dragonite player right now. Because I feel like Iron Hands is the most important Pokemon to get chipped at this point. So I don't know if going for the damage on Ting Lu is necessarily worth. Well, that said, they don't really have a good way to hit Ting Lu in general. So maybe that was the whole point anyways. Because like, if you look at this team, like, there's no way they can hit a Water type super effectively. Outside of like... No, there's just no way. There's <laughs> actually no way. That's also maybe like flirting people, but they don't even have that right now. Yeah, we do see the Fluttermane here. Fluttermane has to worry about Heavy Slam from King Lu. And then Iron Hands can protect the turn. You could go for a uh, substitute actually and maybe play it that way, but then you have to worry about like an Iron Hands King Lu double up into Fluttermane on the substitute turn and gain KO'd at, in that regard. And you're really just not threatening any off of the pressure at all. Like, if Moonblast will do a decent chunk to Iron Hands, I imagine Moonblast's Icicle Crash double up will probably just KO Iron Hands, but in return, you're going to lose Flutter Main from this the Heavy Slam, and you're likely... There's probably a chance that Iron Hands even lives this with Team Lude up on the field and with uh, Reflect up for Icicle Crash, and we do see the switch. Yeah, you know, let's see, the game could end very quickly this turn. See the GU. Fluttermane probably will just be able to KO with Moonblast now. But. Heavy Slam's very scary. What's this Terra? It's very important. Okay, you can live the Heavy Slam now. Very, very good Terra. Very good Terra. So now you can at least go for the Moonblast safely onto the Iron Hands. Or go for the Substitute. Well, there are two plays. Substitute's good here too. But no, it's just a Moonblast trying to cover for the potential of uh, Thunder Punch plus Heavy plus a attack as well. And we just see a Heavy Slam onto the Fluttermane. Which now, since the Protect happened, this is a bit harder actually because you have to worry about stomping. But the good thing we do know the Chiyu actually has will o -Wisp, so you can will o -Wisp King Wu and then go for a Moonblast again on Iron Hands. Well, this kind of makes this work out at least a little bit better, right? Moonblast is very helpful, to say the least, in this position. And the Chi you have the boost too. You do need will o -Wisp down as well to actually just prevent your Chi from dying to stomping too, for that matter. But will o Chi you is very uh, helpful in this kind of situation. But it's kind of nerve wracking because like you need a KO on this Iron Hand at the same time. That's it. Okay, but the stomping is going to do a lot to Flutter. Hopefully they do read into Chiyu. They do? Nice. Also, Sand Tomb not stomping. My bad. <laughs> Sand Tomb still would have done a fair bit, you know, the recoil. Oh, the Acro Talon back in. The important thing about having Acro Talon here, actually, is Talon defensively is really strong right now. Like, not worrying, having to worry about the Brave Bird recoil helps a lot because it means Acro, you can get guaranteed Acro onto Flutter. If they don't break it, then you can Acro Chen Pao pr with Pryo too, which is definitely very valuable. It allows you to play this bulky Talon in a kind of interesting way. And honestly, the fact that they have Protect on Talonflame, in, in a way that kind of just acts as a Covert Cloak, right? Because, hey, you know, you don't have a way to get hit in that regard by um, Fake Outs anyways. So it's like a Suedo um, Covert Cloak. Yeah, we do see the Protect there. Smart Protect. Ooh, New West is a lot. Double up. The Protect got red. And the Dark Pulse flinches. 
off turn. Very, very off turn. And now at this point, you're not really safe to take a Dark Pulse either. That's an incredible read by the opponent here. But they were getting threatened pretty hard by this Talon Flame with the Acro. But ultimately, it's not going in their favor. Now let's see how much can King Lu do this. Is Dark Pulse in Talon? That is good. We get a Sand Tomb into the Chiyu. Doesn't do nearly enough damage though. So the Chen Pao comes back in. Get another turn of Leftovers. I do believe Reflect is still up right now. So this game is not quite done yet. Because Talon is of course faster than Chiyu. And if Talon is somehow bulky enough to live Chen Pao in Reflect. And all of a sudden, this game is a bit more interesting. Not to mention, there's some potential of like King Lu being able to live the Chiyu hit with Dark Pulse thanks to the Leftovers recovery. So the key is ultimately can uh, Town Flame live a hit from this Chen Pao, and I think it's very unlikely that it can. But Reflect is up. And they might not go for Icicle Crash out of fear of the miss and could go for a Sucker Punch instead. And Sucker Punch is significantly weaker. And with Reflect up and this the mind game of like Kellen too. Icicle Crash might this be the best button to quick. And of course Icicle Crash does have like a chance to miss as well. So there's definitely scenarios where things can turn around. We do see the protect. This could be a protect as well on the Tinglu side to this get another turn of leftovers. But no, we see the read and Tinglu goes for I mean Chen Pao goes for the hit here. Those Chiyu Dark Pulse KO Tinglu. No 2 HP! Oh my god, Sand Tombs goes out in the GU again. This will be a knockout after uh, Sand Tomb gets uh, <laughs> extra damage. And all of a sudden, the game's over now. Insane Dark Pulse survival. Very, very insane Dark Pulse survival. Now we get to see this Heavy Swam Acro and you just get a KO on this uh, Chen Pao for game. Very impressive. Very, very impressive. Yeah, this is the formality at this point. It's Heavy Swam. We do see the Chen Pao Icicle Crash. Reflect, I believe, went down that last turn, but... Reflect or not, that's an easy KO, so... Yeah, we just see the Heavy Slam. The Chen Pao goes down. Taking the game. This is an insanely clutch leftovers recovery to get... That's enough HP to live that Dark Pulse. Just saving the game completely. Also avoiding a Dark Pulse flinch too for that matter. Very hard uh, game for sure. Is it, is it this special one? Oh god, it is this special one. Alright, okay, so we're seeing the back school dango person again versus a uh, Garganacle, Murkrow, Chen Piu here. This is an interesting matchup. We already know this is a uh, Assault Fest back caliber. That makes it fairly strong into these Pokemon. Now, there's some interesting sets on the other side, like Earthquake, Rock Slide, Clear Amulet, Tusk. So the Gyarados can't stop the uh, Tusk from this doing insane damage, right? And you also have like Iron Defense on Garganacle as a win con. Specs on Flutter. Choice Scarf, Bulky, Chiyu, and then like Life Orb, Chen Pao. So that's some like insane break potential. Along with, uh, as we saw in day one, the Icy Wind and Murkrow too. <laughs> so I don't think that will mean too much for this matchup. Though, importantly, having a Focus Sash as well. I mean, there won't be this like a easy KO on Murkrow. You always have to get two targets onto it. But it'll be interesting because like they have, they should have a speed advantage with a lot of these Pokemon. So Tusk and Chen Pao could do like a lot of work in a lot of scenarios here. And we could just see like Murkrow Tusk since there's no way to intimidate the Tusk. So you can kind of just sit with that pretty well, I think. And make things work in that regard. We'll see. 
On the other side though, Bax is pretty strong in this matchup. Bax caliber is pretty strong. If you can play Gyarados uh, correctly and just like maneuver around, right? Then that's a good way to this come back and kind of give you a way to this win the set. And this set is uh, the six points match, I believe, for whoever qualifies, I mean, wins this, gets to the semifinals. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Does seem like a pretty hard matchup, for sure. I do think. The opposing tusk is like super scary. I'm not sure a good approach to actually deal with it. You could go like, mm, you could go like backs lead, but since you can intimidate a uh, tusk with Gyarados, it's scary, and you would take a lot from Rock Slide as well. But like Gyarados backs probably is the best way, and go like Insta Terra on your backs caliber. Of course, being the ground Terra does mean the backs will be pretty safe. from anything that they could do. But we'll see. Oh, that is... Yeah, I do think it will likely be back Gyarados and then like Flutter. Flutter with Booster is pretty good in endgame here. Then Scar Gold Ango could be helpful potentially, but it's hard to really find a placement for it. Amoongus also could possibly be useful because it's something that can live a uh, tusk, uh, headlong rocks, and sun. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Yeah, we are the same tusk and Murkrow, no surprise there. We see, we do see the backs, but we see with uh, Ting Lu instead. It is fair enough. Ting Lu, of course, has been absurdly bulky Pokemon. You can get a move like Stealth Rocks down to kind of. Give some assurance versus Chiyu in the back and Flutter in the back potentially. Also, this ruination damage helps take down Tusk a little bit. <laughs> or this ruination in the Murkrow to lead to like an Ice Shard KO too. Well, you know, it's not too bad a position. Especially because this, uh, I believe the Tusk does not have CC. I believe it is Terra Blast. So you're actually like way safer than you would think in this position. Don't know what Terra this is though, cause uh closed Terra. But it is open team sheet say Terra Blast, which is interesting. Go see Protect, Sunny Day instantly. And the Protosynthesis boost. See where Bax is looking. Looks for the tusk. Smart, because like looking for the Murkrow here is like kinda rough. We do see the ruination straight away from the Murkrow. Onto the Murkrow. Pretty good play. It's hard though, because like I do think Tusk is going to do like absurd damage into this pass caliber. The, the bright side here is this uh, Murkrow, of course, does not have foul play. It's just Icy Wind. And being Icy Wind, this obviously means, oh yeah, it can't really. <laughs> it can't really just KO your backs. Like if it was foul play, right? You could go for a foul play plus any move from Tusk, and you're probably taking care of this backs fairly well, right? Like this, you can't really get a KO, I think. And not being CC. Unless that was a typo on the info sheet I looked at. <laughs> yeah, Murkrow the switch is out. Smart considering it's like it's hard to target the Murkrow in this kind Ooh. Oh yeah, no, that's KOing. Headlong is KOing, there's no way. Oh, this is a rock slide. Okay. Flinches work too. <laughs> And then, yeah, flinch worked. Uh, backs got flinched. That might be a game ending flinch, too, because now you can just rock slide again. And you can go for an icicle crash and do this uh, Ting Lu. Backs will go down to this rock slide. And honestly, maybe not even an icicle crash. You could just go for your sucker punch reading a Terra Water. <laughs> It'd be fine that way. Or let's go sacred in case either option happens. Well, I guess Icicle Crash in a weird way covers for the Terra. 
like rock slide can flinch icicle cross can flinch so it's like kind of covering for terra because like if they get flinched again right that is super game ending so that could be an effective way to play this out as well also notable they do not have tailwind up yet but they still have mercury on the back so it's still fine in that regard but it's something that's worth keeping in mind we do see Tusk actually switching out, not bothering with that. And this probably is going to be a Sacred Sword into this uh, Bax Caliber, if I had to imagine. And I imagine Bax will Ice Shard or just the switch out straight up into Gyarados, yeah. Probably wishing he went for a Rock Slide after that result. <laughs> you know what can you do, right? See the terrestrialization on the team leader to Terra Water. No surprise there. Let's see. Attack fails, but we do see a ruination into the Murkrow. Likely there's a miss on Icicle Crash there. So Gyarados actually gets in super safely. In front of what was a uh, rock slide and sun boosted uh, tusk with clear amulet. So, getting way, way safer than you would think, considering the position. Now, this is also like not too bad. Like, Murkrow can get tailwind here, but Chen Pao is not really carrying at this point. It's not able to get a KO on this uh, Ting Liu. And it doesn't really do much to the Ting Liu with any move really, Sacred Sword does okay, but like it's intimidated, even with the life orb, you're not doing the most damage in the world. Like sure, you may be like Icicle Crash Gyarados for some decent chip, but I don't even think that's like super high value at this position either. So this is looking decently favorable here, and yeah we need to see the Chen Pao to switch out, King really intimidate. Going back to the Tusk as well, smart because like Waterfall's not going to do much damage, you have potential to be T-Wave here as well. You get the Protosynthesis and you can take advantage of it that way and the Rock Slides will actually start doing some decent damage to Ting Liu as well. And we do see Gyarados switch out into Excalibur again. The thing is Bax can't afford to take a Rock Slide. And Ting Liu is not able to KO the Dark Row here either. Let's go for Stomping. Like, Murkrow is very safe here. You can switch out Murkrow again to Chen Pao and just get another Tailwind or Sunny Day for later. And Ting Liu won't be able to KO Tusk. It might be able to do like, um, a little bit of damage with uh, Ruination. And maybe put it, and maybe try to put it into Rock Slide range, I suppose. But even that's like not the best way of this taking over the game, right? Cause like it's hard to switch out at this point. We do see a taunt actually. Oh, <laughs> Tingle this can't protect. And we see the ice shard too. Yeah, rock slide gives the KO. This is another stomping though. Doesn't KO. Tusk is getting a decent amount of chip here though. But the cool thing here, because that play, the ice shard uh, stomping, now if they <laughs> go for it again, right? Like they go to Gyarados, they can just protect Gyarados and go for stomping and get the KO on uh, Tusk. And Murkrow can afford to switch out because of uh, stuff Rocks potential. This creates a pretty decent position, honestly. Let's see. It's still hard though, because like Murkrow has been able to conserve itself like really well. Tailwind still up. To worry about like headlong potential. Okay, we do see Fluttermane come back in. But Fluttermane's not in the best position in the world either, because it's like it's remarkably threatened by Icicle Crash. And we're slowly getting to a point where a mon like Garganacle could potentially even end game this too. Or Flutter their own Flutter main can also be very problematic as well. 
and sun and with tailwind and shadow ball so like a lot of this negative things can potentially happen here like there's a taunt on the Ting Lu as well so tusk could get free damage <laughs> there's not much to be done in that regard Can we see the protect kind of telegraph but we'll see if it well, there's in our sunny day again. And King Lu can't KO Murkrow, which is once again very important. We'll see what this uh, Tusk does this turn. I'll just uh, head pong into the Flutter Mage. Oh, EQ. Okay. Oh, the Pixar was looking at long pong. Oh, it's no headlong. It's EQ Rock Slide Terra Blast Protect. <laughs> what a weird set. No headlong on Tusk. The EQ still does okay damage. Honestly, less than I would expect, considering it's in Sun and all. Oh, we do see Chiyu. Chiyu having the Choice Scarf. Thanks for a lot of damage. The Chiyu actually isn't the biggest helpful on here, it's Choice Scarf. But can't there's a Gyarados in the back, and a Ting Lu is Terra Watered already. So this position actually doesn't look too crazy. I do think, it, it, though, if you can actually get a KO here, you can do some major chip, right? Gem Pal could probably close if you get like enough chip on some, some of these ones. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm really seeing uh, how this game can get turned yet. <laughs> I guess like a Heat Wave Burn or a Defensive Terra would be very good. Like Terra Grass or Terra Water. Terra Grass would be ending. Oh. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> so you get the Kaon Flutter and uh, Ting Lu's best move is Ruination onto you now. We see the taunt as well, preventing a substitute. Not necessary. Well, Terra Blast. Also, this dude to Ting Liu. Doesn't KO. It allows Flutter to live, which is interesting. I guess they are Life Orb uh, Chen Pao, so they probably imagine that their Icicle Crash will just be able to KO Flutter Mate. But I think for sure it was a. Uh... Yeah, Icicle Crash probably KOs Flutter. The thing is, Gyarados comes in, right? It's not like all. It's not really a simple position. They're, they can't protect, which is huge. So you can double that up. But if the Ting Lu this attacks, right? When you go for the double up and the Flutter main to guarantee a KO. And you just lose, uh, and if Chiyu actually goes down to it, that could be very damaging, right? Because there is Chen Pao now, even with the resist. I do think there's a chance Ting Lu might be able to actually get a KO on this Chiyu now. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, I do think, uh, actually, notably, Ting Lu being on the field means that Flutter might not be able to kill Chen Pao. <laughs> But the taunts in effect. So you can't protect Flutter as well. So is this a hard position? Flutter does switch. Reading the double up. But if this just goes wrong, it'll go super wrong, right? It's still a scenario, like, if they double up, right? Then you need um, to survive from... Okay. Not a double up. I mean, it is the double up, so now we're going to see the same scenario regardless, where if uh, Stomping KOs, then this is game. We'll see though. Do we get a Stomping KO? It's very, very pivotal here. Here it is. No, into the Chen Pao. That's not nearly enough. Bit of a misplay there, I think. Like, I, I think it's a roll to KO Chiyu at this range, but... 
you still have the uh, sort of ruin down, so there's a more of a chance. And if you get the KO on GU, that's game. That is straight up game. But now, since you didn't do that, there's just gonna be a Terra Blast into this King Lu, and this is another Ice Cool Crash into this Gyarados. And I'll take two KOs, right? Yeah, we see the Protect on Gyarados. Smart Protect. Smart Protect for sure. Yeah, Terra Blast goes out. This does mean there's a mind game here. If Flutter protects and then Gyarados gets an attack off, then you win that way. But also if uh, Flutter attacks and then this gets Chen Pao hit and uh, hit by the GU, then you will lose. So there is a couple mind games here that makes this position kind of interesting. For sure. We'll see, we'll see. It was a very uh, hard position. Very, very hard position. Alright, he's thinking. The timers are very low right now, too. This may play a part. Can you look at that? There's only 25 seconds on his clock left. Yeah, Dazzles should KO. But Terra Blast, Sucker, KOs Flutter, and then Gyarados shouldn't be able to close versus Chiyu or Chen Pao. So you do need to uh, get this read right. If he doubles Flutter, you have to protect. But yeah, we see the protect. Is this an attack into Gyarados? No? Ooh. So this Kaela, it's in Sun. I don't think it will. It doesn't, seven HP. And Sun lasted this long enough. Murkrow being able to set two sunny days this game, thanks to the Ting Lu not having a way to really hit the Murkrow, ended up being the key decider. Even getting the read, this is the Sun preventing the waterfall from being able to KO Chen Pao there. It's very, very clutch. Very, very, very clutch. Now there's only four seconds left. But, uh, not much can be done in this position, I think. Maybe look for a T wave onto Chi Yu. Double, but no. There's not any time left, only one second on the clock. And he does this go for the Terra Blast now. Confident that Chen Pao this KO is a bicycle crash, which is. It doesn't. But it flinches. It doesn't flinch. What a greedy play. What a greedy play, man. Oh my god. Because Gyarados, of course, would not be able to, would likely not be able to KO the GU. The waterfall. But Actually no, it probably does. Sun faded. So he actually did need to rely on the flinch because like is that 35 HP? It's a Gyarados. It is Impish, so it's on the bulkier side. But there's sort of Ruin in effect, and it's only 35 HP, so I think there might have been a chance. But I'm surprised he went for it though, considering he didn't bother targeting Gyarados the prior turn, where the Flutter Maid was more likely to protect. Crazy endgame, though, for sure. An Icicle Crash Flinch ultimately saving the game. And the key survival from the waterfall. I'm curious what would have happened if it was this Terra Blast Icicle Crash. Like, if the Gyarados actually gets a. Oh, wait, no, Chen Pao goes down to the. Chen Pao would go down to the Light Orb, so Sword of Ruin would no longer be in effect. GU has like 35 HP, Waterfall goes off. I don't think that KOs. 
There's a chance Gyarados could go for T-Wave too, but I think at this point for Waterfall. So that could have been an interesting thing. We do see their Chi did have at least a little bit of bulk investment, not too much, but that could have been pivotal there too. And it of course was a Terra Grass, so it's resisting the Waterfall too. Interesting. I'm not really sure uh, if that was the play to go for, but it did work out, you know, it did work out. <laughs> Uh, definitely was one for the fans, you know, the Icicle Crest flinch to end game. I do have to skip around with this. I believe we are on uh, Junior Finals right now. Yeah, this is the Junior Finals. We see one playing Snow and another playing... Uh, Kind of Wo Chien Brick Room, but with like a Flutter to you, Glamora Backbone. Little Wo Chien Hatterene. Into Snow. Honestly, probably favorable. Like, this is probably favorable for the, the Wo Chien guy. We see Dozo, Tatsu with Snow and Iron Hands Flutter. Oh shoot, it is one, two, one. Yeah, we see Flutter to you into Hands, Dozo. Do you believe this is Assault Fest? And we actually see Thunderbolt into Dozo turn one, too. And Dark Pulse as well. Double targeting the Dozo. Heavy Slam goes out into Flutter, man. KO. That's what makes Dozo like so tough, right? Because like theoretically your Iron Hands is threatened by the Moonblast potential. Threatened by the attacks from this GU2. So, like there's a potential that you just go out to Tatsu and then quickly like, EQ or something. Or this quick wave crash into one of these mons. We try to cover that by just going double attacks into Dozo, getting as much damage as possible, but instead it backfires in the worst way, getting Heavy Slam turn 1, and now we see Iron Hands on the other side too. I don't know, this is a very, very tough position to win at this point. But you already lost your Flutter, this one turn, Iron Hands switches out likely into the Tatsu, as it is this Tatsu switch. Cool thing, Iron Hands always does like decent damage into the Dozo, but I don't think it's enough to actually like save this uh, matchup scenario, right? Yeah, there's the Commander proc. Or it's alright. There's a Trostalization. And a Terra flying on Iron Hands, interestingly enough. Which honestly is a pretty fair set, because like Terra Flying does mean you will a uh, normal Tusk. Sets, so, like their headlong CC EQ, Terra Flying just completely walls it. While Gra Terra Grass, for example, only like somewhat walls it, as like CC will still just hit for a lot. Yeah, we see the EQ too, so having the EQ immunity instead of the resistance is a bit stronger in this kind of position. And you see why they kind of went for the double up turn one instead of going for, um, the Iron Hands, because like if EQ goes out, they may target Iron Hands and Tatsu to switch in, then you would lose both Chiyu Flutter. Maybe not the Flutter, but you would lose Chiyu and you take like a ridiculous amount of damage on Flutter. But now Hatterene actually comes in, and there's some interesting aspects in a play. Like if Hatterene lives this turn, you get Trick Room and you can set up like a Swords Dance or something. Also, in the tempo, this game's like massively changed because like Swords Dance plus a uh, Trick Room here. It's very, very powerful. Yeah, the Dozo protects. Is this an SD trick room? Because letting this Hatterene this get off a free attack is crazy, but no, they, they did protect, actually. You see, is this a Swords Dance? No, it's a Wild Charge. Alright. Wave crash. Goes for the double. And yeah, Hat just dies. Kinda tough because they were given a free trick room. 
I was thinking they might be Focus Sash, but they would have just want for it, right? Yeah, the Dizzle Player did give them like a free Trick Room. That Protect turn. But didn't get the read right and ended up going for the Protect as well, just resulting in a trade. So Iron Hands, this gives the KO on Dozo in return. So Iron Hands comes in for the other side and now it's able to Dragon Pulse and you're able to Wild Charge their Iron Hands with yours, taking it down. And before game two, I will need a brief pause to get to that for Crohn's moment. Be very brief, I am speed. All right, game two. Also tough though, that kind of just shows how Dozo can be so hard to play against. Because like, theoretically this, oh, if I attacked um, Iron Hands there, right? But it switches the Tatsu and I just get EQ'd, then I just lose off that. So he tries to go for the Dozo play instead, but then the Iron Hands is, I mean the Don Dozo just protects, and then the Iron Hands just goes for a Happy Swam, getting the kill on Flutter turn one. And from there, the positioning was like nigh impossible. So he was given like a brief window if he was able to get the read right on the Dozo Protect turn. So like if you were able to like read the Protect, get Trick Room up, and maybe have like Swords Dance on Iron Hands, and then maybe set one up and then try to leverage that back with your Trick Room turns, you might be able to at least like have enough damage potential to carry. But you need a lot to happen, right? You need like at least two sword of dances. You need Trick Room to last long enough too, because like your the opposing Iron Hands will be able to KO you with their own wild charge. Thanks to the Terra flying on your Iron Hands. So it's like there still is just too many things that needed to happen at that point. And Terrasalization wasn't even used yet on the opponent's side. So this is a bit much of an ask there. And ultimately this not able to get the game. Yeah, on to game two. They're having technical issues, it seems. Oh. Quirky amount of technical issues. There we go, back to team preview. Let's 
see. It'll be interesting, like... I feel like this going the, the Dozo mode has, was so effective game one, but also, like, Wu Qian is very, very scary, right? It's like, you just... <laughs> Wu Qian Iron Hands kind of just walls out Dozo very effectively. That could be an interesting adjustment. And Wu Qian also doesn't have to worry about, like, the Earthquake. I guess there's some fear of, like, the snow mode maybe as an adjustment now. Because, like, if you, if you bring Wu Qian the snow mode, maybe that could end up pretty bad for you. But Iron Hands... Iron Hands kind of works very well into snow in general, so I don't think it's like the most problematic in the world. Also having like the Glamora too, I mean, Glamora is not horrible in the snow if you have like Terra Water potentially. You could get like Hydro Pumped and Wave Crash and EQ aren't too great for you to take. But I do think like Wu Qian uh, Iron Hands are very pivotal in how you can play this game out. And maybe you could even look for like Iron Hands plus Hat and going for like Fake Out Trick Room maybe. If that's your set. I'm not, unfortunately, not familiar with what the sets are for these. Because I only have the Master Games. <laughs> but I do think Wo Chan is something that could potentially be leveraged a bit better. And, like, sure, Wo Chan's defensive typing is, like, super bad, but I think putting the Terra on Wo Chan might be super worth it in this kind of matchup. But we'll see on the game, too. We see Dondozo plus Iron Hands into. Yeah, there it is, Wo Chan plus Flutter. Exactly what I was talking about. So now, like, Wu Qian weakens both of these physical Pokemon, and Wu Qian just has a, a great time in front of Dozo. Kind of weakening it a bit. We also see the Flutter is, like, no HP likely, a Focus Sash Flutter main. And we do see the massive HP on the other two, three Pokemon. It'll be interesting, like, Wu Qian Terrasalization here could create a lot of problems. Depending on what Terra it is. And then the ability to target Iron Hands as well is a bit scary because like Iron Hands doesn't want to take a Moon Blast. It doesn't particularly want to take any of the attacks. Wochian also can like Giga Drain here. Let's go for like a safe play of. So there's some op decent options to like. You can also go for a Double Protect to so like check out what your opponent does. And yeah, well actually going for a switch instantly from Flutter into GU. Bit of a ballsy switch because like I feel the most likely target is a wave crash into that flutter main slot. So a bit greedy. We do see Tatsu come in. Do you see the Tatsu come in? It's at least better than the game one situation because Wo Chan can at least like sit in front of this Don Dozo pretty well. Yeah, we see the Terrasalization on this uh, Wochian side, I believe. Likely like a Terra Water, or... No, it's on the Dozo side. Into the Terra Grass, meaning... If this isn't a Protect, though, then I think Chi should be eating a Wave Crash. <laughs> yeah. And Chi, this goes down for free. And considering that was a Terra Grass play, I think this... <laughs> I think sacking Flutter might have been better, maybe. Yeah, you can't get Elite Seed or any attack off here. Is there a way to deal with Dozo? This is just a complete done dozing. Flutter main comes back in. Oh, Flutter main is immensely threatened by a wave crash as well. Potentially, maybe show like a ruination protect play. If, yeah, if the flutter rain had sub, that could maybe be interesting too. Oh, we just see a shadow ball. I'm trying to go for a spadef drop, I guess. Yeah, we see the wave crash as well. Just getting KO'd. Yeah, this set is looking pretty done. Looking pretty done. Yeah, there's the Ruination. Oh, they had Iron Hands the whole time, wow. But Iron Hands was a very safe switch in earlier. Because of the Wochan drops, meaning that, oh, you don't have to worry about the Wave Heart Crash doing too much damage. Heavy Swam wouldn't hurt Iron Hands that much either. 
so it did backfire a bit. The brights, oh, it was covert cloak dozo. It was covert cloak. Wave crash still doing ridiculous damage to Iron Hands too, so I take it back. I do take it back a little bit, but at least it lived, you know. At least it survived. Would you see a foul play into the Tatsu? Yeah, it looks pretty over. Fluttermane can come back. If you have Fluttermane in the back, that would be a very, very good switch in here. And yeah, there it is. And you only need to get the KO on Iron Hands. Because uh, Wojian does not threaten any real substantial offensive pressure here. It has only Ruination Foul Play. Those are not moves that can actually KO anything here. So it is double up the Iron Hands every time. And you should be able to get the win because of that. Like, Iron Hand's probably going to tear to, like, fire or something, but I don't think that'll make a substantial enough difference. Oh no, this is a Wojian going for Terra into Terra Water. That's okay. Of course, Terra Water does mean it's weak to the Wild Charge from Iron Hands in Endgame 2. So it's not going to be able to win con this at all. As we see the Moonblast KO the Iron Hands. And Tatsu's going for a little Draco Meteor. Well, a nice little bit of e Draco Meteor. Likely Elite Seed. Yeah, there it is. But none of this matters when uh, Iron Hands can just come in later and go Wild Charge. <laughs> you could potentially maybe greed uh, Elite Seed onto Tatsu. And say, oh yeah, your Iron Hands will switch in that slot and maybe get some extra recovery there. But it's not going to be enough to live a Moonblast uh, Wild Charge double. So I don't think it really will amount to much. And they can also like Moonblast fake out too. If you protect here. Since this is not looking like a great position. Mm. Yep, Moonblast. Not even bothering with the switch. Draco won't KO. As Draco misses as well. <laughs> we, will see, we see another round Elite Seed. So Wu Chien will be able to get a lot of recovery back. You know, if the opponent doesn't actually switch out, Wu Chien may be able to get some HP back, you know? Like, it's adding up a bit. <laughs> like, this is outside of Moonblast range. The opponent, though, they, they switch in Iron Hands and you're good. It's as simple as that. <laughs> no Iron Hand switch. Moonblast, does Draco connect this time? It does. No KO. Okay. There we go. That was likely another lead seed because you need <laughs> no lead seed to come in the Iron Hands and then like somehow get damaged, but Iron Hands was at full. So there was never really enough leverage to come back with Wojian. Like, the Moonblast going off too, doing like that much damage is more than you'd ever ask for, right? In Dua. That's very queen play, for sure. Dozo completely controlling that game. And showing off like, how terrifying that Pokemon can be. Now we get Senior Finals Jump Bluff. Chiyu, Garganackle, Torkoal, Tusk, Flutter. Into Palabalance. This is actually a very mediocre matchup for Palo Balance because, like, the back caliber <laughs> Ting Lu, all this stuff doesn't really like a Tuscan Sun. So, Tuscan Sun is going to be like very hard to actually be able to deal with. And Jump Puff also creates some problems on its own right, too. Being able to sleep powder, like, everything, basically everything on the team. Other than the Arcanine. And Arcanine, this gets dealt with by Tusk. Also, likely this is a, a jackpack Torkoal, so you can just lead Torkoal. If they lead Arcanine, then you just get the insta switch to Great Tusk. So, like, Torkoal Jump Bluff is very, very hard to deal with for this team in general. Like, Bax Caliber is kind of nice into it because you can, like, Ice Shard it. Oh, they just straight up go Torkoal Tusk. It's fair, too, as <laughs> the Torkoal will switch out, anyways, right? 
You'll be able to go to jump off like this, though. It does mean you will get intimidated, so I think it's a little less good. Drought, of course, goes first, though. But yeah, we'll see. Is this a jetpack? There it is. Do you see the jump off? Or does it go into Chiyu? Going into Chiyu is scary, too. <laughs> or Flutter, for that matter. Flutter... Yeah, this is the Flutter. Okay. Smarter than I was. I would have went Torkoal Jump Off, but this works out way better because you get two Protosynthesis Bonds at the same time, and both of them threaten uh, KOs. And so the play there was, like, smarter than what I had in mind. Now you have two Protosynthesis activated, and... This is absurd amounts of damage coming in, potentially. Wait, you throw in the KO on Arcanine. Ar they don't really have a great way to switch in around Tusk. But like, maybe they could Terra Poison uh, Bax or switch to Amoongus. Oh, that might be Terra Water or Ground too. Those are two very popular Bax Caliber sets. It, and if it does, then you can just like, move Blast and be like, okay, yeah, we're good. <laughs> or let's go for Shadow Ball, because like, it's more neutral, right? Um, Oh, do you see the switch? Into Amoongus, most likely. Yeah, there's the Amoongus. Is Arcanine going to Terrasolize here to try to live the turn? And yeah, it will. Why we tear water and you look for a will o wisp onto the Tusk to try to slow it down at least a little bit. Oh, we'll Terra Grass. Terra Grass even better, getting the resist here. So, great kind of position around, but instead he gets Power Gemmed as well. Ow. And the other side gets CC'd. Alright. Interesting play, a locking the power gem there instead of a uh, green blast. But it does kinda work out because now the flare blitz should be KOing the Arcanine too. And unironically, losing a uh, flutter there is kinda fine because now Chi Yu can come in. <laughs> like, it kinda worked out because Chi Yu comes in now. Oh no, Torkoal comes in. Okay, no Chi Yu. That was wrong. Okay, that's still interesting then. Because, like, Amoongus might be able to outspeed Tarkoal and then just put it to sleep with Spore. If that's the scenario, then it's, uh, still very much a game, right? And the Tusk can maybe look for something too. It could be Scarflock, I'm not sure. Is that just clear? I know mean, there's plenty of sets. Yeah, we see the switch, which may means is presumably, uh, do we actually see Garganacle there? So they didn't bring to you. So this is actually a very commanding position now, seeing that there's no Chiyu in the back. Yeah, we see the backs come in. The bright side though is uh, Garganacle low-key can end game. <laughs> if it's not Flutter being back. Yeah, we see the overheat into the backs, doing the ridiculous amounts of damage, but importantly giving it a plus one boost thanks to its uh, thermal exchange ability. Best way to come back here, you need this, um, Garga is actually doing kind of okay here. Arcanine can't really KO either of these mons. I'm not sure what Arcanine actually clicked on that turn. But regardless, it seems pretty hard. It's like, there, this is still a read scenario, right? If, like, Glaive Rush goes into the right target that doesn't protect, then this is probably going to be a KO. Is that plus one? Oh, that could be very hard to deal with. We'll see though, we'll see. Arcanine switches? Yeah, who does Bax target? Like, I think you likely target Garganacle. No, this is protect. That's fine, does Garga have iron defense? Ooh, it protected. Good play. Overheat? Overheat into the Amoongus! Oh! Alright, oh, that's one way to bring it back. See the berry? It's a lot of play there. It was still a very hard position. I do think Garga probably lives the plus one gray wave rush at least from uh, back, so there's that. And I don't think uh, Moongus lives the overheat from Torkoal. Torkoal is faster. 
We're seeing the switch, maybe the Torkoal actually is faster, you know? But otherwise, you didn't need to bother switching your Amoongus earlier, because he just gets support for free. Oh, do you see the Isokun crash? That's not KOing at all. We see the Salt Cure in exchange. But now, what's this uh, Torkoal Amoongus speed war? I do know Amoongus is naturally faster, but there are some that run min speed, and he is min speed as Torkoal is outspeeding, but it doesn't get the KO only at 9 HP. So that explains this, why we saw the Amoongus switch earlier, knowing it was under speeding there. Oh yeah. See a Pollen Puff, I think? But there is no more back, so the Pollen Puff didn't matter. Insane, this zoom Torkoal. The little speed on Torkoal, that's to make sure you outspeed the zero speed Amoongus. Leading to an insane backfire on that zero IV speed. And now, like, the tempo of the game is completely changed, uh... Because all of a sudden, Garganackle looks hard, uh, very hard to deal with. And with a uh, potential Scarf Tusk in the back, too, you know, it's not an easy scenario to get out of. Of course, if this is speed boosting Flutter main, but I believe it's special attack boosting. So Scarf Tusk should be able to south speed. We do see the switch into Arcanine here. Torkoal has the potential to go for a Yawn too, though I think it's likely to go for an Overheat, right? Into the Moonga slot, get rid of it. Maybe a Protect? No Protect. Oh, they Moonblast the Torkoal. Rogarka gets a free turn, gets a Recover off. And that is absolutely huge. Garga at full. We see the Yawn on Flutter too. If Flutter falls asleep, you know... <laughs> That's kind of game, honestly. So Torko can just go for an overheat now at minus four and look for uh, some big damage. You can have the salt here on the uh, target too. This is such slight things going quite well. What kind of looked like after the early turn, not seeing the GU and seeing the flutter main go down instantly from the flare blitz. It almost looked like this game was going to go super, super different from the early turns, but really that's not how it's resulting, as we see the salt here onto the Moongus. Big chip damage. Where's the overheat? Into the Arcanine. Okay. So they are able to buy a turn. We do see the salt cure come off here. But we do know already the Torkoal does outspeed the Amoongus. So the Torkoal is free to this. go for another Overheat. Overheat, even though it's minus four right now, I do think it will still find a, the ability to KO here. And you can go for like a Salt Cure on the Arcanine this turn and take it down that way. Because Arcanine doesn't really threaten any damage onto either of these Pokemon right now. So this is looking very, very favorable. And not having the Sun up is honestly kind of good here. We do see the switch into Fluttermane again. But Arcanine cannot protect. Arcanine can in fact not protect here. Getting some more regen though. We see the Flare Blitz. Alright, Salt Cure. Ooh, Salt Cured the Amoongus to cover for the switch. Goes for the Arcanine 2, gets the KO. Clever targeting. Reading the switch there. Now Amoongus comes back in, but having already gotten the Salt Cure, it's starting to look really, really hard. The quest is impossible at this point, because there's no sun up for the Flutter to take advantage of either. And Garga's at full HP, so I don't know any way Garga could lose this game at this point. The Garganackle actually this completely able to win con here. Oh, we see the Moonblast. Half HP. Salt cures the Moongus. And now there's an overheat from the Torkoal again. Oh, this is Yawn, actually. Fair enough. Because <laughs> now you can just protect and then you'll be fine. And we do finally see a spore from the Moongus into the Torkoal, but. A little late, honestly. Like, this salt cure damage is gonna add up. Like, sure, you can Paul and Puff on this next run from Flutter. So the Yawn is just going to put it to sleep and Garga can protect and they can recover again and it's like not 
really much going in this favor right now. Yeah, we see the assault here. Now you can just protect your Garga, get more lefties, go for the recover again, and the assault here will slowly but surely kill this Amoongus, and slowly but surely kill this Fluttermane as it can just never break this Garganacle as we see the protect. Tough game, tough game. Forget the sleep. Turn for Torkoal. There's the Pawn Puff. But more importantly, there's the leftovers for Garga, and now you can just look for a recover here. There's this really this an inevitability at this point. This game is uh not going too great. See it at 40 HP. There's even a chance for uh, Torkoal to wake up here and finish the game even earlier, but we'll see, we'll see. Go for the overheat. And the Moongus, and you just recover, and you're good. Like, the key is, as much as the Moongus can heal the Fluttermane, it cannot heal itself. <laughs> cannot heal itself anymore. Yeah, we just see the forfeit. Knowing the game was uh, long since over. And this way it go a little bit faster. Now we can go into game two. I'll go ahead and uh, skip ahead a little bit. Just in case of any technical errors again. There we go. On a game two. I, I do wonder if they bring Chiyu. Actually, maybe they bring Palafin in this. <laughs> in this, because they're going to slow play for uh, Garga Endgame, right? Then eventually the sun will fade. So that could be a potential leverage to actually get some value out of Palafin. But I think it's like regard was very hard, so maybe not. <laughs> well, very, a very tough matchup for sure. We just see Torkoal flutter and we see Arcanine backs again. Fair enough. No Tusk lead, so this is like kind of fine, but... Actually no, this is going to be eject packed into Great Tusk. And we're in the same situation as game one that didn't really work out too well. Yeah, there's the tusk and tusk. I do think we see maybe a headlong into Vax this time to prevent this uh, CC switch easy moment, you know? <laughs> or maybe the CC into Art instead. We saw the Terra Grass and a Moongus switch in that went a bit annoyingly. So I don't think they have to allow that this time. I don't think they will allow it that this time it's a Terra Grass and switch to Amoongus. This could be a Arcanine double up or you could just double into the back and say, hey, uh, switch into Amoongus, man. But yeah, we are seeing the Terra, likely this is the Terra Grass again. Oh no, the Tusk Terra. The Terra Fire, okay. So now resist the back's caliber, so I think this is a double up in Arcanine if you're going for Terra Fire here. Yeah, there's the Terra. It's the Arcanine, right? That was the Vax actually terrestrializing. The poison. So now resist the close combat, resist the Moonblast here. The problem is I 
think because of that Terra Fire, this will actually be a target. No, okay, Arc is protected. Never mind. The target's fine, but. Do you see the Shadow Ball prepared for the Terra? And it does crit KOs. Ooh. Yikes. Crit choice specs in Sun. With. <laughs> That's uh, that, that's tough. That's tough. I do wonder where the tusk targeted. That was a headlong. Likely this is targeting the Arcanine, as I said, considering it was a uh, Tarasolite need a fire to resist the Icicle Crash, then the Terra Poison backs. So they did already have some like info on the Tarasolization, because uh, well, I guess they were covering for Willowis potentially as well in the tusk. And they also cover for like now the low ring coming in. <laughs> Fairy typing, right? This is decent coverage overall. Um, now you can kind of like Shadow Ball. One of these. Ooh. The opposing flutter is faster. Oh no. It's another KO and this is looking done. <laughs> this game is basically over now with that speed flutter reveal. Yeah, we see the headlong into Arcanine. And there's no coming back from this position. There is absolutely no coming back from this position at all. Not a shot. What a dominant performance there. Yeah, we see the Tinglu coming. We see the Tinglu coming. Also confirms uh not scarf on Tusk. Yeah, Tinglu. Not living these, man. <laughs> yeah, there's a forfeit. Very, very dominant game too. This is the power of this Torkoal being able to switch instantly off the eject pack. So every time he just brought the Arcanine in, it kind of like super backfired. I do think an approach that should have been leveraged is potentially having Arcanine in the back, actually. If you have Arcanine in the back, then you can do you can do this, right? You can switch in your arc, and then just say, oh yeah. Now your Torkoal's gone, but you're not having the active turn, and you force the switch out where you get damage. That's how you kind of take advantage of the eject pack better. And that would have been effective game two, but game one, that's hard to go for anyways, because they led Tusk and you have no uh, Tusk resist, right? But game two, having Arc in the back potentially could have been a little bit of an out to help the endgame. Game one though, when they just have Tusk as lead, then it's like, uh, like sure it's a decent play, but it's still just like, you're an Arcanine and there's a headlong rush potentially. That's a bit hard to do. We can move on, that was the Senior Division Finals. And we're going to be on the Master Division Finals right now. So you already know this is a no item acrobatics, um, Hound Flame. And then this team, there's Wood Hammer, Life Orb, Curse, Mimikyu. There's a uh, Gunk Shot, Safety Goggles on Annihilate. And the Assault Vest on Max Caliber with Terra Ground EQ. So some interesting sets. On the other side, there's like Town Flame with Acro. You got the Misty Terrain, Double Screens, Grim Snarl. You got Sash, um, Mouse Hold, and this uh, Safety Goggles on the um, Nihilate 2. Also, notably, like Quick Guard 2 for uh, Town Flame, which is kind of funny, but I don't think it will make too much of a difference. And then you got the Swords Dance, Strain Punch, Thunder Punch, Detect on Iron Hands with the Citrus Berry. And a King Lu with Sand Tomb, which Sand Tomb has shown like pretty substantial value. This being able to trap people in and this keep a good lock down going. Yeah, it should be an interesting finals to this uh, watch for sure. Let's see. 
Yeah, we see the Grim, King Lou, the classic. <laughs> I feel like they've gone Grim, King Lou like every game, but this time it's a bit tougher because like, is Chen Pao and Annihilate? Hard to actually get hits into an Annihilate for sure. Well, notably the Annihilate does not have bulk up, so it can't really... <laughs> It will take a substantial bit from this uh, Ting Lee that's going for a sand tube into it. And the re this is a recurring damage. The more fear is like you can reflect and you can just target it into Chen Pao. Because it's so and that's kind of hard to deal with. Reflect, though, kind of makes Ting Lee incredibly hard to get through because of this uh, impish nature, this insane bulk this Pokemon has. Yeah, we see the Terra too, just to get away from that dark ground typing, and it's Terra Water. Now all of a sudden there's nothing to really hit this Team Lu too crazy hard. Yeah, we just see the Reflect again, the classic play. And we see the Ice Spinner onto the Grim. And this, uh... Oh, it was Gunk Shot. Hell's Gunk Shot's animation, I was like, wow. I've never seen Gunk Shot's animation, so I got so confused. <laughs> you know, like I just said earlier, they are Terra Poison Gunk Shot on it. Yeah, we see the Heavy Slam into the Chen Pao doing a lot of damage. But again, I, I think like trading Grim for Reflect in this kind of situation is like actually worth. Because <laughs> now you can bring in, uh, yeah, they bring in the Talon Flame and you have Acro to KO the, uh, Champal, you have acro damage on uh, Annihilate potentially too. I mean, you can also just protect and just KO the Champal and just ignore the Annihilate. Could Annihilate doesn't redo the most damage. Sucker Punch could be annoying too, so this protecting and this heavy slamming is like kind of okay. Let's ignore it. Oh, you can have Annihilate in the back and this to match the Annihilate as well. They don't have a way to self-hit Annihilate too efficiently. So you're fine to just protect your Talon. And yeah, they don't protect Chen Pao, so you can just have your Team Lu KO the Chen Pao here. And since they have no way to self-hit, right? You can do a classic thing is just don't hit the ape. They hit the ape. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> they hit the ape, they hit the ape. <laughs> you still quick guard here, or you could acro, I guess. I mean, Acro will KO. Maybe. Actually, no, it probably doesn't. You know, it's a uh, sort of ruined sound, right? Yeah, they Terra. Terra Poison. I mean, the Sand Tube does bore, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Terra Poison Gunk Shot. Let's go. Sucker Punch. Yeah, we do see the Acro to Annihilate. Oh my god, the critical hit brings it to 3 HP. Oh lord, uh, is this a Sand Tomb? And it is a Sand Tomb, gets the KO. Gunk Shot missed from the Annihilate. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. The other thing, even if Gunk Shot connects, it's still a hard position to win from. Cause like you got a sand tomb onto it, so you just protect the next turn. And if something, whatever comes in for Talon, right? If that's faster than the annihilate and the bat, the annihilate too, then you can just have that hit, or you just like double protect again, and you'll be probably fine. Still unfortunate though, cause I don't know how many turns of sand tomb it would actually take. I think because it was poison, I think sand tomb would have actually had this killed right away though. So I think it would have been fine regardless. And yeah, we see iron hands too. So I think this was, uh, regardless of the gunk shot miss, I actually think this was a locked game because of the sand tomb connection. This is super effective damage on the terror poison. And of course, if you don't protect, right, then you just get, I mean, if you don't terrestrialize, then you just get acro KO'd. So if you switch the bundle, then you get acro sand tomb, and that's like super bad too. It was like, unironically, a bit of a pin after this having one reflect up. Which is pretty crazy to think about. <laughs> it is pretty crazy to think about, right? Yeah, we see the freeze dry. It's not going to do too much. 
because of uh, Team Blue's Special of Ruin. Do you see the Ice Spinner as well into the Iron Hands? Not too much either because of Reflect and Iron Hands has been an insane Pokemon as Drain Punch goes out, KOs the bundle. And now Ting Lu gets the final hit here with a Heavy Slam and just wins the game in pretty commanding fashion. <laughs> pretty, pretty commanding fashion. Like, Acro did low-key show his value a bit there, because, like, you Acro... <laughs> well, actually it kind of didn't, because, like, Brave Bird, it doesn't really matter. You would have got more damage. Even if you die there, Iron Hand still wins this endgame. Yeah, we see the Mimikyu. I kind of forgot they had another Pokemon left, I'm not gonna lie. It was not yet completely done, but it is pretty done, right? Ting Lu can get the K. Actually, wait, Ting Lu missed something. Yeah, Ting Lu lives this double up regardless because of the reflect. Oh, wait, the wood hammer, never mind. Wait, it lived anyways. Oh my god. I had forgotten about the wood hammer, but it still just survives on like 4 HP. Oh, wait. Thunder Punch. And now the game's actually locked in his side. It wasn't locked earlier because, like, if he gets the K out of wood hammer, then it's actually this uh, a win. But Woodhammer misses the KO anyways, even with the Sword of Ruin, even with the Life Orb, even with the 120 base power, Woodhammer off of Mimikyu's attack stat, not very strong. <laughs> and it's not able to get the KO. But it is interesting though, because like he did leave the Iron Hands open, and that was a uh, Poi Roth, and Iron Hands just goes down straight up, so. Getting the right read and getting the right calc survival to this take that game thanks to that impish Team Lu and that Reflect. Like, even though the Grim just sacked itself for Reflect turn 1, this got so much value off of it. And just carried the game. And some very, very clutch EV spreads for sure. And like, he's honestly just brought these same four Pokemon like every game too. <laughs> We've seen that Team Lu, Grim with like Iron Hands Talon. Like almost every game on stream so far, so it'll be interesting to see if we get an adjustment. Like I think Mouse Ape is honestly not bad here, especially if your opponent's trying to bring Annihilate, right? Because they your Annihilate is always stronger because you have the bulk up and you and they don't have a way to self hit. So the Mouse Ape is stronger than the non Mouse Ape Ape <laughs> in this kind of scenario. And also thanks to the Focus Sash, Shen Pao will be unable to KO the Mouse Hold, which is pretty import important too. So it creates a very, uh, kind of this favorable situation overall. This help deal with these mons, right? We'll see though. What they end up choosing. I, I feel like a mouse ape adjustment is pretty good into... If they think they can go like ape. A lot of their mons are slow. And the only real way to answer mouse ape would be going like bundle Chen Pal. Especially because this is a focus sash on... Flame Mouse. So I think this would be the perfect game to just bring out Mouse Ape and just say, hey, yeah, lead bundle and lead Chen Pal, that's your only way to beat it. Nah, this is Grim Team Liu again, I should have. <laughs> if it's not broke, uh, don't fix it, you know? But this is t a lot harder. To, like... You can kind of get Play Rot. You can kind of get Wood Hammered. Freeze Dry Wood Hammer double up would be a bit scary. Wouldn't KO, I don't think, but it's still at least a little bit scary. So importantly, Grim also takes a lot from Poirot too. Mm -hmm. I think Ting Lu might just attack and you just say reflect and I you're not KOing my Ting Lu man. And that's exactly what's happening. Freeze dry. Those are Poirot. That's a wood hammer, it's not KOing. And this is where the bleeding happens. Do that heavy slam. Not going for Sam Tomb. I think going for Sand Tomb would have been a bit better because like the Life Orb recoil, the Wood Hammer recoil, Sand Tomb would add up at that point. But fair enough. So I do think Sand Tomb was like the better play. Oh, I guess Sand Tomb has a chance to miss, you know. And it <laughs> oh, it's fair. It's kind of fair not to go for it. Yeah, you can protect your uh, Ting Lu here. So then again, like you, if you protect, then you get your Grim doubled up, and it's like, ah, oh, that's kind of awkward. 
there is a chance they just don't let this attack again, right? Because they know their fighting types are like super good. So if you can get rid of the Mimikyu, then you can essentially just win the game. And yeah, they are just attacking in the light screen to prevent the freeze dry KO on the Ping Lu. And saying, yeah, let's target my Grim Mound. Oh. Player off goes into there. Heavy Slam. And yeah, Mimikyu's gone. And now the potential Iron Hands in the back is just uh, very, very hard to deal with. <laughs> it is now very, very hard to deal with. And the Bundle wasn't able to get any value there either. Missing a Hydro Pump, I believe. As Chen Pao comes in. Hmm. Now you can protect your Team Lu. Your Tingle is perfectly safe. Once again, you need to sack your Grim. And they have to take the KO on the Grim Snarl too, because Spirit Break does too much to the Chen Pao to be ignored. Too much to the Bundle too, for that matter. So they can't really just choose to ignore your uh, Grim Snarl, even though it's already done its job. Yeah, we see a Protect. Let's get the leftovers back. <laughs> we see the Missy Terrain for the fans. Respectable. <laughs> yeah, they target to the Team Loop Protect. We see the Ice Spinner and Grim. <laughs> the Missy Terrain didn't really do anything there, but, you know. <laughs> Set up the field for a little bit of a, a Japan Nationals victory, you know? Uh, I gotta show off all your techs on the main stage, right? Yeah, there's the Iron Hands again. And this is where it's impossible, because Iron Hands in Reflect, in Light Screen, still having Terra. Not really a way to get around this. Bundle just has to switch out instantly. And Arcanine. Arcanine helps a little bit. This could this we'll see if this is really bad or not. King Lu probably this terrestrials to water. To force a need of, of freeze dry sacred in order to KO it. And yet yeah, now Chen Pao can't KO Ting Lu. If you protect Chen Pao, you're just giving a leftovers recovery as well. So the game becomes even harder as we do see the ice spinner. The Ting Lu does a little bit of damage, not much. Thunder Punch. So Chen Pao will be able to get another turn. But it takes the Heavy Slam as well. And you can see the leftovers is adding up over time. And the Misty Train is getting value now because now the Arcanine can't Will O Wisp. <laughs> did ultimately end up getting value. It did ultimately end up getting value. Which, uh. Okay, good point about that, right? Well, honestly, even they get a will -O in this position, it's like, it's so hard, because the Iron Hands... You can get the will but then you're not hitting the Iron Hands for, like, any substantial damage at all, so, like, what does it really matter? Yeah, we're gonna see the Terrestrialization here. It's gonna be a Terra Ghost to be immune to Drain Punch, most likely, I think. And yeah, it is. The problem is, uh... I get this Thunder Punch Sand Tomb and they kill you that way or you this. No Protect from the Ting Lu and they go for the Ice Spinner on the Iron Hands. We see the Flare Blitz too. Okay, is this Drain Punch? If this is Drain Punch, then that Terra was immaculate and very good. Ooh. It was. See the Citrus Berry proc? Okay. Was no Swords Dance. That's huge because now um you can't really double up the Iron Hands for the KO because if this Drain Punch heals back all the damage, and now it's Thunder Punch will KO the um Chim Pal too. So you can this Thunder Punch, you can Sand Tomb the Arcanine again, you can Drain Punch the Arcanine and the Sand Tomb the Chen Pao. 
There's no way to break this at this point. That's a completely dominant pin by UB Slow here in this Masters Finals. Like, it is really impressive. We see the Sucker Punch almost KOing with the critical hit, but not enough. We see the Wild Charge, actually. The Gyarados answer. <laughs> but now, there's still this in Iron Hands on the field. There's still this in Iron Hands. What is Iron Hands taking away right now? Oh, that's the Thunder Punch in the Chen Pao. Using that Sword Dance to get plus one to actually be able to KO it. And now are we going to see the good old Talon Flame? Acro Talon with the Closer. Yeah, Sandtomb kinda has picked up a little bit, just in general. Though I think the more common uh, Ting Lu today has been like Stomping, Ruination, Stealth Rocks, and Heavy Slam. I think those four moves have been more common. But Sandtomb was only like UB Slow, I think. Even though there was also a few players in the West that were using Sandtomb for that matter. But later we got... I don't have specific names because I'm forgetful, but I know there was like a lot of uh, players in the West using at like regionals and... Uh, I believe I like saw some play at uh, IC too in EU. Yeah, the acro comes out, Drain Punch, this gives the KO. Oi. Screens, baby. <laughs> Yeah, he's literally led Grim Tinglu every game, and this is Iron Hands Talon back, and he's won like every game like this. It's actually uh, kind of almost a little bewildering how dominant this is. Yeah, we see the acro, and he locks up, and that's the tournament. Oh my god. Yo, Amy Turner. <laughs> Maybe I started too early. Maybe I started too early. Yeah, that was the Masters Finals. <laughs> All right, what an impressive set. As I pause, <laughs> is there an game? No, oh, of course not. That was finals. I was like, why is the stream an hour, an hour longer? But I guess they do a interview with him. And of course, I cannot understand Japanese, so the interview means nothing to me. <laughs> I can only read Japanese Pokemon moves. Yeah, that was a pretty fun tour. It was pretty decent, it was pretty decent. Okay. 